This is Selma Schimmel for the group room at the 14th World Conference on Lung Cancer, WCLC, organized by the IASLC, the International Association for the Study of Lung Cancer. We are in Amsterdam. And I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Denise Yalman, Professor, Doctor of Radiation Oncology at the Ece University yes, in Izmir, Turkey. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. We're very happy to have you here because understanding that the IASLC is an organization that has a multidisciplinary focus. One of the key areas of treatment for a patient with lung cancer is radiation therapy. So we cannot leave out the role of the radiation oncologist in the management of the lung cancer patient. So talk to us about your specialty. Yeah, of course, radiation therapy is, uh, especially nowadays, is one of the uh, most important treatment ways of lung cancer. Uh, it was not as important uh, before because as the technology uh, develops uh, and the treatment machines develops, uh, we are able to give uh, more doses uh, to the area we want, to the tumor volume, and uh, the randomized studies also uh, define the role of radiotherapy very clearly in the treatment of lung cancer. So we play an important role in the treatment of lung cancer, uh, especially for the patients with locally advanced disease and the patients who cannot be able to be operated uh, with early stage disease. It has an uh, important role also in the patients uh, with early stage disease and even uh, after postoperative uh, patients as an adjuvant therapy. When you spoke about the evolving technology of the equipment used in the radiation uh, oncology setting, one of the great advances forward is the fact that the radiation beam can now be so focused, focused yeah. um, specifically on the tumor site, and also that it doesn't have to burn the top layers mm -hmm. of the skin, that it does its job by being able to penetrate to where it needs to go in this very directed yeah. approach is new. It's like a targeted therapy, uh, as in medical oncology. Uh, we now uh, can uh, manage with the patient movement and uh, the organ movement. And it's the breathing. Yes, it's the breathing in lung cancer, especially, uh, you know, lung is uh, moving every time you breathe in and out. Right, so, so, the, so the technology to manage while the patient is on the table breathing and that movement and still giving effective yes. therapy. Yes, uh, you can teach the patients, uh, they can cooperate with you. There are many devices controlling these movements and uh, the beam is on uh, when the tumor is not moving, uh, the, t the beam is off when the patient is breathing. Uh, you can uh, fix the patient uh, with new uh, patient fixation devices. And also uh, there is the fourth dimension, which is the movement and uh, the image. You can, uh, before the treatment, you can take the image of the patient, the image of the place where you want to give the radiation therapy, and uh, if that image does not uh, correlate with your treatment planning image, you can make necessary uh, corrections and then give the treatment uh, very correctly to the area you want, right, thus so sparing the normal tissues. And the physicist is very much yes, involved yeah, in, very in calculating much. all of this. Yes. What are some of the common side effects associated with radiation therapy in the treatment of lung cancer? Yeah, uh, especially the acute side effects starts within the uh, second uh, week of radiation therapy and uh, dysphagia is the most common side effect, uh, coughing. And as the radiation therapy progresses, the, the patient can develop severe dysphagia and this can uh, affect her uh, or his way of uh, alimentation. Uh, it's what causes that though exactly? Is it swelling related or inflammation related yes, to Yes, inflammation the radiation? related to the normal tissues such as esophagus. Uh, it's very near to the tumor. It's very near to your radiation volume. So you cannot prevent 
the esophagus away from the uh, to, uh, treatment volume. Now the esophagus isn't, it's part of the GI system right. and not the you know, upper respiratory system. So explain the correlation that the esophagus has in all of this. The esophagus is uh, in the upper digestive system, which is in the mediastinum, uh, in the retromediastinal area. And when you treat uh, the lymph nodes of the mediastinum and even uh, the tumor, uh, it's inevitable for the esophagus to be away from the tumor volume, your treatment volume. So, uh, and the radiation therapy uh, affects the normal cells of the uh, esophagus with inflammation. It, does that mean there are GI side effects too? No, it depends uh, on the, uh, your treatment volume. Uh, sometimes for the lower lobe tumors, maybe for the uh, left-sided tumors, especially for the lower lobe lesions, Maybe the part of the uh, stomach can be in the treatment area, but uh, it's very uh, uncommon. The esophagus is the main organ. What stages of disease will you use radiation therapy as part of the treatment plan? Uh, especially for locally advanced cancer, for stages 3A and 3B, uh, this is uh, the treatment option for these patients is chemoradiotherapy uh, given concomitantly. And for the metastatic patients, for example, for uh, brain metastasis, bone metastasis, we can use palliative radiotherapy. And for the early stage patients who cannot be operated for medical uh, illnesses uh, or who refuse the operation, we can use radiotherapy also for the early stages. I mean, every stage there is a, the role of radiotherapy in the treatment of lung cancer. I'm curious, Dr. Yam, in the role of patient advocacy in Turkey, where are we with the mentality and the idea that patients are getting more involved in their care and becoming advocates? The patients nowadays uh, are being I think more uh, conscious about uh, their disease and the role of advocacy, uh, but uh, it's not developed uh, like in uh, other European or American countries. It's developing nowadays. With uh, the patients are more aware of the uh, clinical trials, and uh, they can go to the internet, to the website, and uh, learn about their uh, diseases and their rights with the doctors. Turkey is one of the countries where you have significant uh, cigarette yes. usage. Are there active cessation programs happening in Turkey? Yes, uh, we have uh, uh, about two years ago uh, the government uh, developed a new program. It's forbidden to smoke in the closed areas. Uh, you can only smoke outside. And uh, there are some advertisements in, the, in televisions or in uh, mass media uh, uh, defining the uh, role of uh, cigarettes in lung cancer. So I think it's decreasing the smoking habits are uh, decreasing. The people are aware uh, of the uh, bad effects of cigarette smoking. Professor Dr. Denise Yalman, first I want to say thank you for sharing not only knowledge about the dynamic role of radiation oncology in the treatment of lung cancer, but also giving us a little bird's eye view of what goes on for the patients specifically in your country. You are Professor Doctor of Radiation Oncology at the Ege University in Izmir, Turkey. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome.